Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. If you design Wi-Fi networks or you're a Wi-Fi engineer, you need to be using the NetAlley AirCheck G3 Pro. This Wi-Fi tool has a ton of different features and we're gonna go over them. In this video, it's gonna be an introduction to the AirCheck G3. First, I wanna say that NetAlley did send me this to keep for free, so I wanna get that out of the way, but all of my opinions are my own. I did test out their NXG about a year ago and I loved it. If you're new here and you'd like to support my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit my website at mactelecomnetworks.com and I do have affiliate links in the description below. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at what comes in the bag with the AirCheck G3 Pro, and then we'll have a quick look at AirMapper, which does a heat map scan of our environment in either a passive or an active, and it will show us some issues that we're having with our Wi-Fi network. Okay, and you can see that it comes in this really cool bag. I'm glad they included this. I will be bringing this everywhere when I do my Wi-Fi surveys, but in the front, it has a zip-up pouch. In the front pouch, I have this laser tool, and what it does, it shows me the distance of maybe a hallway. The most important thing to do when we're doing Wi-Fi surveys is to calibrate our levels right. So this will show me our distance and then we could draw it in a floor map and I will show you that after. This laser did not come in the kit. I purchased it on Amazon and I will put an affiliate link down below. On the side, we have a mesh pouch where you could put a drink or something like that. When you're doing Wi-Fi surveys, you're walking around quite a bit. So it's always good to stay hydrated. The first thing in the bag is the tri-band antenna. This does 2.4, 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz. So we'll be able to do Wi-Fi 6E, which is really great. Next, we have another antenna, and this is for doing spectrum analysis. This will do the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz, and I will show you that quickly. It comes with the standard power cable, and then we have our AirCheck G3 Pro, which comes in this hard shell case, which is really nice. On the top, we have a USB where we would put our spectrum analyzer. On the side, this is where we would put in our tri-band antenna, and then we have another USB, and then we have USB-C. We could load floor plans directly onto this through USB or through Link Live, which you'll see. On the side, we have a power button, and then we have volume, and then on the front, we have our touch screen, which is a pretty great size. All right, so we saw what came in the bag with the AirCheck G3. Now let's take a look at some of the settings. Right now, I'm on the Link Live website, and what we could do, we could remotely control the AirCheck G3, which is a really great option. So you can see right here, we have Cody's AirCheck G3, and I'm gonna remote into it. It's establishing a secure connection to the AirCheck. And now you can see we're connected. So everything that's on this screen, I could see on the actual device, which is awesome. See auto test, discovery, Wi-Fi, path analysis, air mapper, which is the coolest feature by far. We have iPerf and then we have Spectrum. We also could add a bunch of different applications if we'd like. For now, we're just gonna do a quick overview. So first, let me go into auto test and see what we're connecting to. Within auto test, I have two different profiles set up and you could set up as many as you'd like, but I have this six gigahertz test and then I have the YouTube. This only does six different tests and let's take a look at those. So first it's gonna test our Wi-Fi connection, which we are connected to that Dolores, and then it will do a channel test and they have two enabled thresholds on there. We have IP configuration to make sure that it's getting DHCP. We do a DNS test and then we do a gateway test as well as test targets. I don't have any test targets specified, but you could do that if you'd like. So let's go back and then run a test. So now we're gonna start the test. And you can see it will go one by one down the list. And now the test is done and we can see it's green for Dolores. We're getting minus 55 dBm and about 400 megabits per second. We'd see we're sitting on channel 36 and the access point is Ubiquity. We're getting DHCP and DNS is working properly. So you can see here that it says roam. So if we were to take our AirCheck G3, if we wanted to test how well roaming works, we would walk around with it and it would show this line when we do roam. So we could test it to see if it's working properly, which is a great feature. Now let's take a look at the Spectrum Analyzer and I do have it plugged into the AirCheck G3. So I'm gonna go over to Spectrum and you can see that the graph is now building out and it should show us the channels that are being utilized the most currently. So just by looking at this map, it looks like 149 is being used the most on the five gigahertz band, but we can check our 2.4, which will be a lot more full than the five gigahertz. So now we see our 2.4 gigahertz and you can see that channel one, six and 11 are being heavily utilized, which is to be expected as those are the only three channels that are non-overlapping. If we click on the three lines, we could change how the graph looks. 
Right now we're doing the frequency spectrum. We could do it in a waterfall if we'd like. So again, in this waterfall, we could see that channel one is being the most utilized and then channel six and then channel 11. Now this is the real time view and you can see these greens are our max hold and these little blips all the time, that could be Bluetooth. This also does Bluetooth testing. And the last thing I'm gonna show you for this video is the air mapper and how we do a heat map scan. And then we could check on Link Live to analyze the data. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a floor plan. I need to click the plus icon and the floor plans could either be in JPEG or PNG. So I'm gonna browse for the file. So on this floor plan, I just got this from UID map. We do have a metering here. So this is one meter and we wanna make sure that the calibration is correct. If I didn't have that on here, I would do a laser scan from maybe my front door all the way to the back and then get those calculations. So I'm not gonna wanna crop this image and then we'll press next. Now, if we're doing a scan of something like a big open warehouse that doesn't have a lot of obstacles, we would wanna make the signal propagation bigger. But since I'm in my house or maybe in an office that has cubicles, we would wanna make it lower. So I'm gonna put that down to 10. We'd also hit the calibrate button to show the width and then the height. So let's calibrate. I'll go down to this one meter. And one meter is 3.28084 feet. So we're gonna set the calibration. And then we're gonna press publish. From here, if we had multiple different testing units, we could push this out to all of them. I only have the one, so we're gonna do it to my air check G3. And then we're gonna push it to the unit. So now this floor plan will show up on this unit, which is awesome. So now let's get the floor plan up in Air Mapper. So we're back on that remote session and I'm gonna click on Air Mapper. So you can see that we have a no floor plan selected. I'm gonna click on the wheel icon. From the settings, we could give it a name, description, and we could select the floor plan, do the survey mode, which we'll do it in passive. We will do an action in a different video. We have dwell time, we have override bands and channels, and then we have the Wi-Fi bands and channels. So let's select our floor plan. You'd see the floor plan is right here, which is called YouTube. So I'll check on it. And then we're gonna click on the three lines and then we're gonna go back to the air mapper. Now we can see in the air mapper that the floor plan's there and I can zoom in on this. So to be able to start a test, we would click start. So I'm gonna do that right now. So what we wanna do, say I'm standing at my front door, I would wanna click on the front door. We could see that there's that red dot standing there and it will go green eventually. Awesome, now that it's green, we would wanna move about 10 feet or to the end of the line of the circle. And then we would wanna click on it again. So I'm gonna actually go do this and record it and then we'll talk about it. And here's the scan that I just did. You can see that I was at the front door and it's red currently, let's press play. It should go to green eventually. And then once it went to green, I ended up going near my bathroom door and we'll be able to see another data point come in. And then I walk a little bit further towards my stairs. I zoom out on the map and then I'll be in my living room at this time. The last point I do is in my kitchen and we can see that that's pretty much populated for my living room, but in an actual business, you're gonna have a lot more data points to be working with. So now that the heat map's done, we wanna upload this to Link Live so we could upload it right here. You could upload it to Link Live or you could export it to Survey Pro. We're gonna upload to Link Live. The survey name I'll call YouTube. I'm not gonna put any comments, but you might wanna do that when you're on an actual survey. All right, and that should be saved to Link Live. So let's go take a look at the heat map scan. So back on Link Live, we could see on the left-hand side, we have Air Mapper. And we could also see that this YouTube went into it and it's uploading right now from the unit. Now that it's uploaded, we could either do an analysis on it or we could take a look at the Wi-Fi survey. You could also do Bluetooth surveys, like I said, and we could export this. So let's look at the Wi-Fi survey. And this is the Wi-Fi survey for my main floor. This is the passive survey, so it's kind of picking up everything around me. And we could drill into specific SSIDs. But at the front, you could see it's getting minus 46, and then near the kitchen, it's getting minus 31. We could also check on the path, and this will tell us how I walked. If we click on AP locations, it's gonna show us a bunch of different APs because it's collecting everything around me including my neighbors. At the top, we have filters, so we could filter for a bunch of different things. We could do SSIDs, bands, channels, BSSIDs, APs, rates, types, channel widths, security, and then authorization class. So let's just do SSIDs and then select Dolores. Now this is the heat map for just that SSID of Dolores. Near the door, I'm getting minus 51, and then near the AP, I'm getting minus 30. I have an AP on this wall and then I have an AP upstairs. We also have this insights icon, so let's click on that. It says select the desired filter to focus the analysis such as SSID or band. 
So we're gonna run insights. And under our insights, we could set a bunch of different thresholds. We could see that most of them pass, but then adjacent channel interference failed, beacon overhead in offending BSSIDs. If we click on the eye icon, it's gonna give us some info about it. And we could see adjacent channel interference is caused by wireless access points that are operating on adjacent or partially overlapping channels. We could see the limit is set to one and there's nine offenders. So let's click on the apply. So within this area, we could see there's nine offenders within my living room. And then at the front door, there is seven. We could also click on those. And this is gonna bring up the access points that are interfering. So that was a quick overview of the NetAlly AirCheck G3 Pro. I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos on it and more in depth. If there's anything you wanna see with the AirCheck G3 Pro, let me know and I will put it in a video. I most likely will do a video about an AP on a stick, which I think a lot of people will find interesting. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.